This is investment tanking taking a look at the first Japanese heavy in the game, the heavy tank number 6. For all intents and purposes it's a slightly nerfed Tiger 1 without the top gun at tier 6 with slightly less armour. What makes it worthwhile over a normal Tiger? Well, it comes in blue. At top tier it's simply monstrous, especially in platoons. You can effectively simulate the Blitzkrieg but on behalf of the glorious Japanese Empire. The near perfect blend of firepower, rate of fire, workable armour and high hit points make the number 6 great at bullying and pushing aggressively in all tier 6 games. The short 88 can make quick work of most targets without the use of gold despite its slightly anemic penetration of 132mm. Comparatively, the other tier 6 heavies average 160 to 170 mm penetration for similar alpha damage values, but this is to be expected from a premium tank. After all, they are designed to be balanced between stock and elite. As beautiful as a long 88 at number 6 would be, it would be removed for being OP quicker than the fabled SU-76i. To put the penetration to further perspective, the legendary KV-2's 152mm howitzer has a premium AP round with similar penetration at 136mm for 700 damage. If you can penetrate with that, you can penetrate with this. The number 6 gets a premium APCR round with the same penetration as the AP round for the British 17 pounder, 171mm. While this is still a step up from 132, it does feel a little bit lacklustre in tier 8 games where your mighty tiger's reduced to a timid looking kitten. But hey, at least it's not heat. The average alpha damage of 220 is workable but not ideal. It's still only 20 to 30 damage less than the rest of the tier 6 heavies, but low rolls are much more painful to experience. They can roll low enough to drop your alpha to only 165 damage, which as a heavy tank will either be brawling in tier 6 or sniping in tier 8, it's just not enough to make you feared by the enemy. And as for sniping, as you've seen so far it's a little bit hit and miss. Literally. Sometimes a 0.38 dispersion will send your shell flying straight and true to the centre of the reticule, but when you need it most, the shell will rocket off into the sky or dive into the ground. This isn't a deal breaker in any event, it just means you'll either have to be more cautious in your aim or try position your number 6 a little better in case the enemy tries retaliating during your reload after a miss shot. Same as any other tank. So in summary for tier 6 games, you can take a beating and dish out more than you receive in the vast majority of cases, but you are by no means invincible. Just enjoy being feared in a tiger for a change, unlike tier 7. As I mentioned earlier, the number 6 does see up to tier 8 with a full plus 2 minus 2 matchmaking. There is rarely any preferential matchmaking nowadays, so you should always just assume that tanks see 2 tiers above when they're released. If I remember right, Wargaming thought pref matchmaking was a little too pay to win, so they just started to phase it out. In tier 8 games, I find it was best to take the second or third line providing support long range to allies, or helping pushes by grouping up with others and adding your hit points to the potential pool to keep teammates alive. Sometimes in these situations, the only thing you can offer is psychological. When the enemies see that they are outnumbered, or even think, oh my god, there's 57 tons of tiger hurtling towards me. They tend to make mistakes, allowing you to push up, get in damage, and take more ground. Poor old T-54. The number 6 can carry a gargantuan 92 rounds of ammunition, so feel free to take blind shots or guesses at where enemies tend to congregate. The aim time is 2.3 seconds, and with a gun laying drive in vents, it feels very comfortable if you stop to fire. I would advise against firing on the move at long ranges, however, as a dispersion and bloom go through the roof. You may have some difficulties fjording rivers and streams, and even crossing soft terrain, as the resistance values are considerably higher than its other tier 6 counterparts. Couple this with a power to weight of only 11.27, and you're not going anywhere particularly fast, especially uphill. Downhill, however, is a different story. Its potential top speed of 40 km an hour can be unlocked, which is quite fun if, say, an SP-1C would get in the way of you and your nearly 60 ton body. 
Oops. Ah, double oops. That's a KV-2 hitting my engine deck. So, yeah, as it turns out, the engine deck is a fairly weak spot, and as such, a KV-2 can have a great game with a lucky penetrating shot. At least this was a tier 8 game, and we're only supporting from behind a ridge. Which is where the gun depression comes in. It's a supposedly good looking minus 8 degrees, but in practice the mid turreted tiger design prevents you from cresting ridges effectively, leading to some rather uh, creative positioning solutions. Ooh, pretty. But what I love and cherish the number 6 for is being a tough little nut to crack. I stand by the notion that positioning is key, though it's probably best to not take two shots getting there like I just did. If you can find a position to brawl and cover multiple directions, you can easily cover an entire choke point. By forcing the engagement on your terms, you can dictate how the enemy will have to shoot at your large, unsloped armour. With 100 frontally, 80 on the side and rear for both turret and hull, there is no easy mode for the number 6. No auto bounce angling in the hull, no masses of spaced armour. So you have to angle yourself, preferably poking out to take your shots to minimise exposure to the enemy guns, and then pulling back into cover. Side scraping is fairly effective, though be careful with how you present your armour to multiple enemies, as one good shot through your front can take out your easily damaged armour rack. And that will happen. A lot. See? Careful use of AP and minimal use of APCR will net you around 40,000 to 50,000 credits per game. I'm judging a decent game at around 1300 to 1500 damage, or a damage ratio of 1.5, as that's what I tend to aim for to help myself sleep at night. To many commanders' objections, the heavy tank number 6 will work in strongholds, but only on certain maps and in conjunction with a healthy complement of mediums and lights. Two number 6s can happily engage an enemy team on choke point, allowing the rest of your own team to flank in faster tanks. The large HP pool helps a lot in being able to turn the game in your favour and reliably gives an overmatch when used correctly on the flank. Just don't do more than two number 6s, they're still pretty slow and bad at reacting quickly. Just remember, they've only got a 5.9 second reload, so not the greatest DPM. If you plan on engaging lights and mediums, bear in mind you have a pitiful hull traverse of 20 and turret traverse of 26. That gives you a total turn time of 8 seconds for one revolution. So you will be circled and die pretty quickly if you let them in too close. So, is it a good tank? Hell yes, it's unconventional, but it's a historically accurate Tiger that remains competitive in its tier. As for whether it's worth it, the credits are amazing, it's great fun to drive, and we're going to need some crews for the incoming behemoths to the Japanese heavy line, and this is just a brilliant trainer. It's not foolproof, it requires a little practice to master, but it's a fantastic not-so-little machine. Other than that, Spare more gold and keep tanking. <laughs>